Hello, this is Julian with Coffer Reviews, and today we'll be reviewing the Shea 22056 Wash Process Ethiopia from Mood Trap Coffer Roasters. And there's the bag right there. And Mood Trap, based out of Singapore, and this is their first ever appearance on this channel. As they're a coffee roaster, I had zero familiarity with going into this review. And even though I've never tried them before, I have heard a fair bit about them as they do have a reputation for roasting very light and selling out very quick. So it was just a matter of time before we did review one of their coffees. I was honestly just waiting for a nudge from one of you guys when I was informed of a separate release of theirs. So when purchasing that coffee, I decided to purchase this one alongside it. So we will see how this one turned out as this right here is day 50. And recipe we went with for this coffee was a 16 to 1 water to coffee ratio, brewed at 99 degrees Celsius, about 210 degrees Fahrenheit. And I like this one best through the V60, which indicates a more medium fine grind. Roast profile for this coffee, that has been a topic of a lot of conversations as so many people compare them alongside Apollon's Gold as being one of the lightest roasting coffee roasters in the entire world. And from my previous experiences and reviews with Apollon's Gold, their coffees can feel slightly underdeveloped at times, while this one right here at no point would I say ever felt that way. Even then, it was an extremely light coffee, so very similar in comparison, but this one I would say was maybe not quite to that extent as it didn't offer that uh, underdeveloped component or quality to it. Still then, very light, extremely light by most standards and metrics. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and start discussing this coffee. Day 27, and I should put a disclaimer and note here on this day 27 mark, I did not see that on the front of the bags they suggest a 40 day rest period, so Actually, the first handful of notes we do have for this coffee come before that day 40 mark, which is something that's going to play in at the end. But we'll start with this day 27 mark as we ran it through the V60, and there was a fair bit in the cup as it was offering a slight and grainy, slightly light and grainy quality, reminiscent of previous Gesha Village coffees while offering a fair bit of depth with a slightly peach soda-like attribute before cooling into this honeysuckle, mild grape, as well as citric complexity in the finish. So for the most part, a pretty interesting start was getting a fair bit of depth from this coffee. Day 30 ran it through the Chemex, and the cup did feel a slight bit more light in this brew method as it continued to offer a lot of the classically Ethiopian Gesha-like florality characteristics, with the honeysuckle being the most pronounced one on this day. Slightly grainy and lemon forward as well, but a bit more tame and direct, which did give it a nice second impression. Day 34 ran it through the April dripper and the increased concentration seems to have helped slightly as the pronounced honeysuckle sweetness was a little bit more abundant in this cup. There was a citric aspect yet again with a slight bit of brightness and mango stone fruit quality to all complement that. So, so far pretty good coffees, but day 37 back through the V60 increased the temperatures and this is by far the best experience I'd had of this coffee up to this point as it was quite reminiscent of Fruit Lips. And for those that have watched a lot of our Gesher reviews, what I look for in terms of these Gesher coffees is a cereal-like component to it. And what I noticed was a grain, citric, floral, and sweet component, all combining for what felt like a Fruit Loops-like cup, clean and delicate all around. So this experience on this day was one of the best experiences I'd had for any coffee this entire year. Wonderful day. Day 39, same adjustments to the Chemex, and it was good again, but it does feel super light in comparison to the V60, but it was also reminiscent of the previous experiences we'd had with the Chemex as it opens up when it does cool down with a complex, soft, floral, citric component, very much in line with Gesha coffees in general. A bit of herbality as well, and that's something I'd mentioned earlier, that slight peach soda-like attribute with a slightly lighter fruit aspect in line with the listed grape. So another nice day. Day 41, back through the V60 at higher temperatures, and the cup continues to remain at its best as it continues to offer what was a Panamanian Gesher-like cup. And that's something I was kind of alluding to when I mentioned that Fruit Loops-like component, but here having this again with a very clean, sweet, structured cup, a fair bit of the honeysuckle, white flowers, and citrus. At times, it was reminiscent of Panamanian Geshas, which is going to be a huge selling point to me. Another wonderful day of this coffee, and this is honestly when I should have started this coffee, this day 41 mark, 
here on day 44, one more try through the Chemex, and it was a really close call, but I did opt for the V60 with this one as it seems to offer a slight bit more vibrancy. The Chemex, what it did offer was immense clarity with the grainy citrus at the forefront and a fair bit of the listed apple brightness as well. I've actually thrown out so many different notes in these notes because there were so many different things you were experiencing within this coffee and it's something that was persistent throughout as on day 47 the best day of the coffee up to this point as it continues to remain very sweet with great clarity depth complexity more of the floral forward components with brightness to complement it as well as that grainy citric quality so here on day 50 it's the best it's been and honestly i should have started this coffee later but it's just a testament to how good this coffee was that no matter what i did the coffee turned out great and despite the fact that i started it too early it still turned out very nice so let's go ahead and put up the tasting wheel so you can see what we're getting we have four level fives so Let's start with the cleanliness level five, yes. And I do want to say that it's something you probably expected given that it is a washed Gesha coffee. But even then, not all washed Ethiopian Geshas have always scored that level five, but this one right here had great definition and clarity to it that it at times felt as clean as some of the best washed Panamanian Geshas I've reviewed. So for that reason, it definitely justifies that level five mark. Finish, level five. That's kind of surprising, but I really did enjoy that grainy uh, citric component finish within this one, and it did have a fair bit of a long-lasting aspect to it as well. So surprisingly, that scored at a level five, but what's really good about it scoring that level five is when it scores that level five right alongside the cleanliness, then that means that it comes out as a very super clean finish in general. So wonderful in that sense, really like that part of this coffee. Florality, level five. Yes, and the honeysuckle is one thing I'd mention, but the other things I mentioned was those Gesha-like white flowers, and for having that in this coffee, that was probably going to be my favorite thing by a distance. At times, as mentioned, it was that kind of white flower, cereal grain-like quality to it, so really love that being there at that level five, right alongside of the citrus, which is at a level five. And I think the only citric note that they do have listed on here is the lemon, and that's fine. I actually didn't experience that much of the lemon. If anything, it was a little bit more of that kind of generic, as I continue to mention, citric graining quality that was present within this one. So scoring that as high as it did level five in a slightly more sweet and clean manner, that's another nice selling point to me. Again, reminiscent of cereal, sugary sweet cereal for me. Then we have a bunch of level fours, sweetness level four. It is on the higher side of level four. Honestly, this is one of the sweeter washed Ethiopian coffees we've reviewed in quite a bit too, so massive credit to Mootrap on that. Acidity, level four. Yes, I think interestingly, this might be on the slightly lower side of level four. It wasn't maybe quite as bright as I was expecting, but there was still enough brightness to notate on this tasting wheel itself. Berry fruit, uh, level four. Yes, there was a fair bit of that throughout the entirety of this one, and I would say maybe not quite as pronounced as the other things that i'm kind of alluding to is the grape quality that was present within this coffee it was there it was noticeable but it's one of those things where i was experiencing an abundance of different characteristics within this one that while it was there pronounced and present it wasn't to the same extent as a lot of the other things we had experienced in this and then we have uh, some level threes i think the only one really worth discussing well the only two worth discussing are the stone fruit at level three I did mention early on there was a slight peachy quality and at times there was a slight mango quality. If I recall correctly, maybe mango is one of the other notes that they do have listed on this coffee. But yes, both of those were present at times, but once again, not quite as pronounced as some of the other characteristics in this coffee. Bitterness, level three. Yes, that is from the slight lemon attribute I'd experienced. Interestingly, as I'm kind of thinking about these notes, we really didn't discuss that too much in this tasting wheel, but the bitterness, it's not bad by any means. It's one of those things where, again, it's kind of mild in comparison to a lot of the other stronger notes we were experiencing within this coffee. Last thing I really think worth discussing is the body level two. I don't think that will come as a huge surprise. It is a washed Ethiopian Gesha, so in theory, it should always have a lighter body, and this one did. So as I'm kind of looking at this tasting wheel, I do think it's a pretty good representation of what I was getting from this coffee. All right, so my overall thoughts and impressions of this coffee, if you haven't picked up by now, this is actually one of my favorite coffees that I've reviewed this entire year. I was really impressed by this coffee, and before I go any further about discussing this one, I just wanna point towards our next bootstrap review, 
For as good as this coffee was, I actually liked the other one a lot more than I liked this one, but that's not to take anything away from this coffee as it's one of my favorite washed Ethiopian coffees that we have ever reviewed on this channel. I do have to say that as far as washed Ethiopian coffees that don't offer a huge peach-like component, I honestly can't recall one that I've enjoyed as much as I enjoyed this one. It's easily a favorite to finish in our top 10 coffees of the year list because of just everything that it did offer. I was really impressed by the depth, complexity, clarity, florality, sweetness, all of the things I'm looking for in coffee. While the one thing it might have lacked was the very strong fruit component that I often seek, maybe if I would have experienced more of a stone fruit-like quality, then it's one of those things that could have contended as my favorite coffee of the entire year. But that's really being nitpicky when it comes to this one because it offered everything else I was looking for in significant abundance with wonderful clarity, really exceeded my expectations by a huge distance. And the funny part about that is I kind of messed up this coffee by starting it as early as I did. So I feel like it's only going to go up from here too. So I do have, I think one or two, I was opting to probably freeze this based off of how much I enjoyed it. But it's just there to say that the best of this coffee is still somehow yet to come. Type of person I would suggest this coffee to, I think it's gonna be your washed Ethiopian Gesha drinker because it did offer a lot of those qualities and a very light profile to it. But as I've kind of alluded to, and no points did I ever feel that this coffee was underdeveloped. This had some great development to it as you were never experiencing that slightly grassy quality. That wasn't something I experienced. Even the lemon quality, which is something I in theory might've expected more of, it was toned down. In its place, you were experiencing wonderful clarity and that uh, cereal uh, citric quality that was present in this one too. So I am just gonna continue to gush about this coffee because I do find it to be way above expectations and easily one of my favorites that I've discussed this year. So I'm going to leave this review at that. If you've by chance had an opportunity to try this coffee, I'd love to know your thoughts and impressions of it as well. If you're enjoying the content, give this video a like, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. This right here has been a review of the Shea 22056 Wash Processed Ethiopia from Mood Trap Coffee Roasters. Thank you for watching.